Hey, yeah. Uh, so my name's Matt McKay. Uh, I'm also an imposter at Aspect Development. Uh, I've worked in various areas of uh, developer uh, experience and as a tech lead for building infrastructure teams uh, and orchestrated large Bazel migrations and rollouts. Uh, as well as Aspect's Bazel rule sets, I've also helped to maintain some of the open source rule sets in the Bazel org, uh, such as Rules Python and I guess the now less so Rules Node.js. Uh, so today, I'm going to talk about RulesPy, uh, a Python rule set for Bazel, and how it differs from RulesPython, and why you might want to use it. Uh, okay, so what is RulesPy? Well, before we dive into what RulesPy is, let's answer a slightly different question. What isn't RulesPy? Uh, so currently, RulesPy is not a full RulesPython replacement, and we'll go into the details a little later on, but I just wanted to make that clear here. <laughs> All right, so what is RulesPy? Uh, so RulesPy is a layer on top of RulesPython. Uh, and provides a more idiomatic approach than running uh, Python under Bazel. We'll go into this later too, but if you've used uh, Bazel and Python before, you know there are quite a few uh, gotchas. Uh, RulesPy provides full Starlock implementations of the Python rules, uh, like PyBinary, uh, PyLibrary, and of course PyTest, uh, as well as a few of our own rules that complement the rest of the rule set, such as PyVM. So yeah, as, as I mentioned, RulesPy is this layer on top of RulesPython uh, and currently makes use of the Python uh, interpreter toolchains. So you can still use the Python hermetic interpreter toolchains that are provided by RulesPython, or you can, of course, uh, build and register your own, like whatever you do now. Uh, we also still use the existing um, pip pars and other external dependency management uh, in the exact same way. Uh, so. Um, Third-party dependencies are still fetched via those rules. Um, mostly, I should say here, uh, RulesPy has first-class support for wheels, but you can still plumb the um, RulesPython uh, external dev rules into it. Uh, currently, we still use the same Gazelle extension too. So if you generate and manage your build files with the Python Gazelle extension, uh, you can still use that in RulesPy. Uh, however, again, I've put a little asterisk here. Uh, we may fork that soon, just so we can better support some of our rules pies and features uh, and help to improve the performance that we've noticed in uh, much larger code bases. So I keep mentioning this like idiomatic approach. What, what do I really mean by that? Uh, so rules Pi makes use of Python, Python virtual environments. I kind of hinted at that already, uh, which, which are a more native uh, Python construct. Our philosophy here is to like try and meet the tooling where it is. Uh, so instead of um, so instead of trying to like teach all the different ecosystems um, tools to work with Bazel, RulesPy integrates with the existing tooling. Uh, among other things that we'll see in a moment, uh, RulesPy uh, removes the requirement of having a dependency on the system interpreter, as we currently use a Bash launcher. Um, but again, that I guess that may change because we now depend on Bash. Uh, so as we make, uh, so as I mentioned, we make use of that Python uh, virtual environment. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, so, it's, so if you aren't familiar, uh, a Python virtual environment is a sandbox-like environment uh, that contains the required uh, Python interpreter, uh, the one from the um, the Bazel toolchain. And it also contains only the required dependencies that you requested from the target. So it's completely isolated from other Python projects uh, on, in your repository and or on the, like, the rest of your system. So it's kind of akin to Bazel sandboxes. Uh, they're considered disposable. Uh, they're quick-ish to create and destroy. Uh, so using this uh, virtual environment allows RulesPy to not have to meddle with the uh, Python path at all. Um, the Python path is just a way that uh, Python finds dependencies via impulse statements. And instead, we use that slightly more native approach uh, that we create a site packages folder and the, you know, the, the normal resolution kind of takes over. Uh, the other thing it also removes uh, is it allows us to uh, run the interpreter in isolated mode. Uh, this, this one uh, removes the current working directory from the... Um, uh, first part of the sys path. So the moment you run like a Bazel test, um, the current uh, 
uh, current rule implementations kind of break out of that sandbox. So as this other consequence of like this meet the tooling where it is approach with RulesPy, um, RulesPy can add IDE support to uh, existing Python, uh, Bazel Python projects. Uh, we can generate a virtual environment for different levels of granularity, uh, such as uh, like a single Py binary or like an entire project, uh, and have like the existing Python extensions for IDEs uh, pick up those virtual environments. Like they already know how to configure the IDE with that virtual environment. Uh, Bazel's just generating it. Uh, it's the same Python interpreter that you, you know, declared on the pool chain, and it's the same dependencies that uh, Bazel manage that end up in that virtual environment. So then so features such as like go to definition, autocomplete, and other existing tools that run inside the, um, the IDE can just kind of work natively. So yeah, as I mentioned, um, RulesPy is that layer on top of RulesPython, and includes uh, Starlock implementations of PyLibrary, PyTest, PyBinary. Uh, these are also exported as structs, so like the rest of our rules, so if you need to extend them, uh, it's, it's slightly easier, although I think we've seen now that there might be something else coming. Uh, there is, I should also mention here that there is ongoing work to Starlockify the existing rules, uh, but this is still, like, the, the, the underlying implementation of how they work is still, like, tightly coupled to, like, how Google 3 do, do Python, so you can consider this, like, you know, just another approach of how to do uh, Python rules. Uh, so changing the existing rules may be trickier to change than, you know, just turn them into Starlock. So yeah, uh, as an extra feature um, that I want to mention and call that up from rules uh, Python, uh, sorry, rules Py is this thing called virtual dependencies. Um, this is where a Py library can simply de uh, declare a dependency on a library, like an external third party library. Uh, but not to any particular version or be tied to any kind of label. Uh, then the consuming um, Py binary or Py test is then required to actually provide that dependency. Uh, this can be super useful for supporting multiple versions of the same dependency. Either that's how you do dependency management or like during a migration of like one version of Django to another, for example. Uh, there's, there's a huge amount of stuff to unpack around virtual dependencies, but uh, a very quick example looks something like this. Uh, so you've got like a Py library at the top that you're kind of familiar with. Uh, I don't know what it is, something to do with Django. Uh, you know, it has the, the name and sources that we're all familiar with. Uh, but then there's this extra uh, attribute at the bottom um, where we just declare this, this dependency of Django. Like, we, we don't know what that is. Uh, but then at the Py binary level, again, we've got the normal things. Like, it's probably a very small Django app. But we have our sources um, and our depths on our Py library. Uh, but then we've got this resolutions field. And here it's where we have to uh, replace that, that Django string, that like opaque Django string, uh, with something more concrete. And at this point, we're we're supplying uh, version uh, four two four of of Django. So when I when I would run that Py binary, I'd get version four two four. You can imagine like another Py binary next to it, like with a completely different version, uh, just overriding that that Django opaque token. So yeah, uh, RulesPy is, again, another asterisk, almost at version 1.0, um, where we're happy with the API. Um, we've fixed a whole bunch of bugs and, uh, well, mostly around virtual depths. Uh, we hope to publish the uh, final 1.0 very shortly. Uh, so we do encourage you all to give it a try. Uh, RulesPy does support um, a more incremental uh, migration path. Uh, it should be just as simple as just replacing the load statements for your existing Py under rules. Uh, we support, like, I don't want to call it a sandwich, but the, like, Python rules Python sandwich, where you go from, like, uh, a rules Python Py library to, to a rules Py one and, and back again. Uh, there should be interoperability there. Uh, we also recommend for even, like, better integration, uh, we do recommend uh, using a pure wheel setup where possible. Uh, rules Py will make, like I said, it's got first class support for wheels. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's everything. Uh, thank you very much.